Finally, I want to talk about a subject in this category, in this lecture, that usually is the most boring, driest lecture that you'll ever get. And I remember when I was a resident and a medical student, I vowed that I'm going to give a clear, simple lecture on fluid and electrolytes and acid-base balance. And I apologize. I know you guys are sitting there thinking, oh my God, this is going to be one dry lecture. Well, it's not going to be terribly exciting, but I'm going to present it in a way that is simple and you will remember it for the rest of your lives. And when you get to be my age and you're teaching young residents and attendants, you'll be able to teach it in a simplified, easy to remember approach. All right, so let's continue sitting up straight, taking notes, writing down. Here we go. We're gonna start with hyponatremia. Hyponatremia. The number one cause of hyponatremia is water intoxication. What do I mean by that? You're giving someone intravenous fluids. Let's say you're giving them D5 W, which is just water with a little sugar, and has no electrolytes. That's water intoxication. Now understand something. You young people, you could drink anything, get anything, and your kidneys will sort things out. But as you get older, and if you have some comorbidities, you got to be careful what you're giving intravenously to a patient. And water intoxication, meaning you're giving fluids that have no electrolytes in it, can cause hyponatremia. Hyponatremia. The second cause, which is much, much, much less common than water intoxication for hyponatremia, is SIADH syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. And that's usually due to metastatic cancer. And that's very hard to treat. But you need to know that's the second most common, but that is uncommon. Let's get back to water intoxication. Listen carefully. If someone is hyponatremic due to water intoxication, and they're just disoriented, you treat it by water restriction. Water restriction. You cut off their IVs and you allow them to re-equilibrate. But if the patient is having coma or seizures, due to hyponatremia, due to water intoxication, you have to give them 3% saline. That's dangerous to do, but you gotta give it to them. Let me repeat that, it's so important. Most common cause of hyponatremia is water intoxication. If they're disoriented due to the hyponatremia, you treat them with water restriction. But if they have coma, or seizures, you have to treat with 3% saline. Now guys, I'm gonna tell you something. I have seen patients, reasonably healthy patients, who drink gallons of water. When I say free water, I mean plain old tap water. And they get hyponatremic. And I always tell everyone, young people, old people, everyone, if you're an athlete and stuff like that, drink smart water. You know what smart water is? It has electrolytes in it. Or drink Gatorade. Don't drink 
free water. Even though young people, you can tolerate it, it's always better to drink fluids that have electrolytes in them. It just makes it easier for your body. I want to tell you a story. Many years ago, a good friend of mine, uh, he was an internist, um, and he was a marathoner. And he would actually go all over the United States to run marathons. And there was one marathon I remember he went to in Los Angeles, and it was, I think, called the Rock and Roll Marathon. And, and uh, I guess you run from one place to another, and there's rock and roll bands, and it's kind of fun. All right. Well, he did the rock and roll marathon. He did a good job. And he drank a tremendous amount of free water, meaning water without electrolytes. He got on a plane in LA, coming back to Chicago, and he was severely hyponatremic, went into a coma, and they had to land the plane in Denver. And he now has permanent um, uh, mental uh, issues secondary to the hyponatremia. So the point is, just be careful. Hyponatremia, water intoxication. All right. Next, let's talk about hypernatremia. The most common cause of hypernatremia is what? Dehydration. Most common cause of dehydration. Of uh, no, let me repeat it. Most common cause of hypernatremia is dehydration. The second most common cause of hypernatremia, and it's not common, but you need to know it for the test in life, is diabetes insipidus. Diabetes insipidus. And Let's just start simply with the treatment of diabetes insipidus. It's uh, desmopressin or vasopressin. All right, just know that the second most common cause of hypernatremia is diabetes insipidus. But the most common cause is dehydration. And is dehydration common? Yes. And the treatment of dehydration is rehydration with balanced solutions. The most important thing you need to know for the test and life is do you give those balanced solutions slowly or fast? You do it slowly. Why? You know that you will have major brain changes and could die from giving fluids too fast. And it's interesting that people in the 1800s even knew this, meaning when you watch Westerns on television and you see when cowboys found someone in the middle of the desert uh, who was dehydrated and they gave them their canteen to drink, what did they always say to those people? Take sips, take sips, don't drink a lot. Again, you rehydrate slowly. It's dehydration, hypernatremia, hypokalemia. The most common cause of hypokalemia by far is vomiting. Vomiting is not a good thing for your body. You may say, well, what about diarrhea? Stuff like that. Uh, doesn't compare to vomiting. Vomiting is the most common cause of hypokalemia. What about hyperkalemia? The most common cause of hyperkalemia is kidney failure. Test question, what is the quickest way to treat a patient with hyperkalemia? It's not insulin and glucose, it's not K-exolate enemas, it is dialysis. Guys, it's a test question and a life question. When someone is hyperkalemic and seriously hyperkalemic where they actually can get arrhythmias, you treat straight away with dialysis. They will put in 
uh, cannulas immediately at the bedside and dialyze the patient. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. So let's just review what we said. Hyponatremia, water intoxication, number two, SIADH. Hypernatremia, dehydration. And less commonly, diabetes insipidus. Hypokalemia, vomiting, vomiting. Hyperkalemia, renal failure. And the best and quickest way is dialysis. Remember, with hyponatremia, if they're just disoriented, water restriction, if they have coma or seizures, 3% saline. With hypernatremia, we hydrate slowly. For diabetes insipidus, we treat with desmopressin and vasopressin. And if they have SIADH, which is usually due to metastatic disease, it's very, very difficult. All right, so that's, that's electrolytes.